Okay, so now that you've seen this video, I'm going to go through a couple of things with you. I want you to open your digital notebooks, and I'm going to have you write down two items that we're going to pull out of this lab. Now, when you watch, keep in mind, when you watch these videos, or any video, or anything on YouTube or online, um, keep in mind that there's always going to be variation in what uh, teachers or professors will show you. But you have to have some type of basis in common understanding. So for scientific method, there has to be some way to identify either the problem or the question and or the hypothesis. So your problem or question is something that you're looking to solve. You want to get an answer for something. You have something going on. And your hypothesis is going to be a testable way to get that answer. So it has to be put in the format of, if I do this, then this is going to happen because whatever the reason. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go through this uh, video. I'm going to start it up and we're going to take a look at this and see if we can identify that you can write down in your digital notebook, identify the problem or question and the hypothesis. Let's put it over here. So let's say I'm going to test a plant's growth with certain certain things added to the plant. So I want to find out how does milk... Okay, he's coming up on... He wants to test the plant's growth and he's going to tell us what he's using. Coffee and tea affect a plant's growth. Okay, so our problem, to put it very simply, we just want to know, and again, uh, the thing that's missing here is what observation he made. So um, it's very difficult sometimes to come up with a problem if you don't know what you observed in the first place. So keep in mind this year, we're going to be uh, doing labs and uh, taking the scientific method apart so that you understand each piece. So in this case, his observation might have been um, different liquids were put into plants and some did better than others. So his problem or question is, how do different liquids affect a plant's growth. Uh, when you first start writing out your problem or your question, you don't have to be specific about uh, how does milk, coffee, and tea. You could just say different liquids. When you get down into your materials or your hypothesis, you can be more specific with that. So let's go on. That's my objective. And so what I want to do is I want to have a... So again, he's calling it an objective we call it a problem or a question. Keep in mind that some teachers may use the term objective. Okay. Plant for each one of these substances. So I'm going to start with plant A. So let's, let's say this is plant A. And so I'm now I need one for each substance. I'm going to jump ahead so here a little bit. So let's say this is coffee. And on plant D, I'm going to add T. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to, to this plant, I'm going to add milk. I'm going to add coffee. And on plant D, I'm going to add T. So what is plant A? Plant A is what we call our control. Okay, so we can stop this here. So our hypothesis is, and again, we're just, we're kind of inferring what the hypothesis is because he's not stating it directly to us. Keep this in mind when you're doing your lab. That's why it's so important to be as specific as possible when you write out your steps to the scientific method. So in this case, this might be if, and you could write this down, if three different liquids, and you could put in parentheses, milk, coffee, and tea are added to three of the same plants, then, now he never makes a, any prediction here or any idea of the outcome. So you would have to add that in. So if we add uh, these three different liquids to three different plants, then 
will have to pick one because he doesn't say. Anytime you're making your hypothesis, you have to, it's like a, it's like a sports game. You have to pick a winner, whatever you think is going to happen. Could you be wrong? Sure. Could the team that you pick lose? Sure. But at least it's testable. So we could say if we add these three different liquids to these three plants, then I'm going to say T is going to um, produce the greatest amount of growth. He doesn't say what growth is either. Plant height, number of flowers, number of leaves, uh, width of plant, um, number of stems. He doesn't say that. But we'll say we'll produce the greatest growth and we have to have a because. And I would say because T appears to be most like water. Okay, so if we add uh, three liquids, milk, coffee, and tea to three separate plants, um, then the plant that receives the tea will grow the greatest because tea resembles water the most. Okay, so that's an example of a very, very basic hypothesis. And I'm really giving you really the basics. We're going to get into more detail as the beginning of the year starts off. We're going to be talking about quantities of liquids. We're going to be talking about your control group, which he's talking about on the left there. But for right now, that's your problem and that's your hypothesis. Just to give you an idea what we're going to be looking at this year. <clears throat> When we do sixth grade science, it's kind of like taking high school chemistry. When you take chemistry in high school, which you will, you will need to understand the periodic table. If you're going to pass chemistry, you need to understand the periodic table. You can always come back and ask me questions about that because I'm an expert in chemistry. But when we're doing scientific method, if we don't understand the steps of the scientific method, we will not be able to do any labs effectively, okay? So keep in mind that the scientific method, we do this first because this is the basis for all understanding of any scientific experimentation that comes later. Okay, so I want you to write that problem and your hypothesis down in your notebook now.